what are the realistic expectations maybe for this year maybe for next year what are some of the low hanging fruits that you think um, can actually happen in the area of the ICT's concern well um, as, as you indeed said uh, uh, the DICT's mandate is quite broad right and it involves many aspects of, um, of digitalization so what our primary thrust, thrust um, in the short to medium term is connectivity right because uh, we cannot deliver online education we cannot deliver e-commerce we cannot deliver digital payments if nobody is connected right so we, we need to prioritize those connectivity and uh, there are a lot of gaps uh, that were identified in the past which um, can actually be addressed quite soon okay um, for instance uh, we've discovered that there are many areas uh, that already have the equipment the access points the routers in place okay. but they do not have the access they do not have the connectivity okay the middle mile so to speak the middle mile okay. yes where you connect the the uh, backbone okay to the last mile i see so that middle mile is missing okay uh, some of them are missing because um, in the past when it was bidded out it was bidded out in segments uh, somebody's con uh, one contractor is handling the 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 one on site right. another contractor is handling the middle mile right. and another contractor is handling the back back hole right so there's a failure of bidding on the middle mile mm -hmm. then you know you don't get to light up right. every, the rest of and in other instances we discovered that uh, the subscription for the connectivity ended December 2021 subscription for for the connectivity I see okay so so the ICT uh, entered into subscription agreements with let's say the commercial oh, telcos see, okay. to provide the connectivity to the remote areas like okay. um, is a municipality or right. a barangay right so it's lighted and we provide that connectivity but they, they expired December 31 oh my of 2021 okay and there was no effort to renew that uh, perhaps because of the elections and um, and so all of those uh, sites suddenly got cut off okay so there were several thousand sites oh my. That, that got cut off uh, after December 2021 so what we need to do is uh, we need to reactivate that quickly okay and, and is uh, that something that can be done within the year or yes by next year or what's um, the timetable yeah um so since the equipment's already there we, there's no deployment issue okay the the issue now really is just to uh, uh bring out a bid okay for activating the connection right so whoever can give us the best uh bang for the buck so right. to speak um on on um, on the connectivity then we can award it so it's still august so september october we still have four months to go I see. so i think that that should be one of the low-hanging fruits I so see. several thousand of them can be uh, lighted up so right. to speak so uh, are, are, is the change going to be more evident in rural areas urban areas or both or? Um, all because uh, this, is, okay. this is through the uh, free Wi-Fi project okay and through the national broadband plan um, of the government okay so so uh, uh, it's long overdue I mean if it expired December that should have been done already done already right uh, we came on board in uh, in July 1 June 30 July 1 yeah. so we're just here for barely two months right barely two months and um, the the gap of six months to seven months where those areas were not connected at all right. is very disconcerting <laughs> so for, for the ordinary consumer what, what can they expect in terms of quality and speed uh, is there is it too soon to say that you will uh, experience you know a notable improvement uh, I was looking at some data that it, between 2014 and 2019, I believe, uh, there was a great improvement, 1,000% plus in, in yes. speed, but we were still uh, far behind, but not as much as before. So are we expecting that kind of trajectory to continue or faster? Yes, yes okay. de definitely. Okay. Actually, the numbers you were saying is uh, 2019 yes. and 2022. Yes. 
So within that three years, three years span, and that was during the pandemic, right. um, our internet speed actually jumped from 19 Mbps okay. to 89 Mbps. Wow. So that's a, a fourfold, right. fourfold increase. Uh, f that's for the, for the uh, broadband um, connectivity on, on land, land, land based. Right, and relative to global averages, how do we compare? Are we uh, nearer the average? Have we oh, met we, the average? Or? We've, we've gone up several notches. Okay, uh, we're, that's, uh, that's uh, very encouraging. Yes, yes, I'm not okay. happy. Yeah, okay. I'm not happy yet, and I'm not. I think satisfied. consumers are glad that you're not happy. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, we aim to improve it further. Okay. And so we actually rolled out several several programs. Uh, one is the Common Tower project, yes. so that um, the telcos uh, can save a lot in terms of capital expenditure in building their individual towers in order to connect the cell sites. So now with the Common Tower, they just lease the towers. So, right. so. Each tower can now host several uh, telcos instead of one tower per telco. No? Right. So, so I think that that should speed up our deployment of uh, better connectivity, more reliable, and more economical. Right. Uh, and correct my figures if I'm wrong. I, I heard something to the ballpark of 50,000 towers. Is that the accurate number that we still need to need to build uh, in addition to what the 20,000 or so that were built by each of those? Telco providers? Um, there are varying numbers okay. uh, depending on what technology they're deploying. I see. Because, uh, for instance, when you go to 5G, okay. you need more towers because the, the frequency requires that your towers be closer to each other. I see. 4G, you can have a f uh, towers further apart. 3G, even farther apart. Ah, okay. So, so as we go higher, uh, the towers, the density of the towers in a certain area has to has to increase. Right. So so that's that's the challenge now. And um, well, I was hearing something that uh, even compared to Vietnam, Vietnam has uh, fewer um, uh, consumers, uh, but far more far more towers. Is that still the case? So have we closed the gap? Have we uh, um, surpassed Vietnam? At not, least? not yet, but uh, not yet. we are we are working on that. Okay. So with this common tower policy, I think we should we should uh, be up to par or even exceed them uh, pretty okay. soon. Okay. And of course, that's the terrestrial infrastructure. Yes. There's the, the satellite. Fixed line. They call it the fixed line terrestrial. Yes. <laughs> okay. The, there's. The, I'm not an expert, but I hear a satellite overlay. Yes. Uh, of course, to complement that. And I think I heard you. Um, say something about your talks with Tesla's uh, Starlink uh, system, yes. uh, Mr. Elon Musk's uh, Starlink system. Yes. Um, but that was when you were, I think, um, named uh, for DICT. Has there been any developments now that oh, you've uh, started work, actually? Definitely. <laughs> uh, um, we've had several conversations already with um, Starlink officials. Okay. And we're very happy to help them uh, set up in, in the country. They are very encouraged because of our foreign direct investment um, laws have actually been liberalized. Okay. And so they've been incentivized to act, to bring in their business here. In fact, that's one of the reasons why, um, why they decided to set up uh, Starlink in the Philippines as the first, first country in Asia. Wow. To, 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 to avail of that, uh, of that service. Because uh, they, they saw our, the liberal uh, investment climate. It was easier to do it here. Yes, yes. I so see. so that's that's the one. And and a lot of other companies are just behind them, mm -hmm. waiting and seeing, observing, see how 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 do these new investment laws? How we deal laws, with Starlink yes. and see what the yes and how these investment laws are going to play. I see. Um, in 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 that. So so I think that. And of course, uh, we sh we would be having a, a a mission soon to the United States to explain to them, explain to them what are the what are the, the liberalization that uh, for investments that the Philippines has, and invite them to come over mm -hmm. and um, do more investments. In fact, this morning I just had a meeting with um, Ambassador Carlson. Okay. The brand the US, new, yes. yes, the brand new ambassador the, from the United States, and uh, she was very, very optimistic about uh, about the um, increased opportunities for foreign direct investment 
of U.S. companies mm -hmm. um, in the country. And um, she actually really looks forward to even more um, um, trade and more economic activity between the two countries. Interesting. Uh, I, I'd like to follow up on that, but maybe st sticking with Starlink for, for, for a minute. As I understand it, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, the, the benefits will be more apparent in remote areas. Is that correct? Because of the technology, not so much in urban centers, because I guess of the, of the buildings and, and, and whatnot. Is that the correct way to understand it? And, and so if, if that is the case, um, how soon will we see the, the promise of fast internet through Starlink and, and whatnot, the other countries that you're working, how soon can we see this happening? Are we looking at a 12-month horizon, uh, three-year three, three year horizon, or what, what's the realistic expectation? Less than 12 months. Less than 12 Less months? Less than 12 months. Fantastic. And um, yeah, that's correct. Your, your observation is absolutely correct. Uh, satellite technology is not for everyone. Okay. And um, it's precisely a technology that's appropriate for areas that do not have fiber optic. Uh, right. connectivity. Right. So in most of the urban areas, we have fiber optics laid out. Okay. And fiber optic uh, 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 technology is still the best technology okay. in terms of broadband, bringing broadband okay. to, 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 to your homes or okay. to your businesses okay. because of its almost unlimited capacity uh, in terms of speed, in terms of latency, uh, in terms of economies of scale. Right. However, there are we have 7,100 islands. Right. And many of those islands, uh, fiber optic technology are just, won't be feasible. Okay. At least not even economically. <laughs> yes. Not economically feasible. Uh, there are very small uh, and sparsely populated islands. And laying out those cables, submarine cables, fiber optic, uh, the cost is just too much for the income that they're going to generate from those um, small communities. So those. In the past, uh, it has to be, it, we have to use satellite technology. And there are many forms of satellite technology. The older one that has been very well established is the VSAT okay. or technology, which is also a satellite technology using geostationary orbit satellites. Right. Geostationary orbits are very, very high okay. up there. And so you have bigger dishes. Okay. Now, the Elon Musk satellites are the low Earth orbit satellites. Right. So they're lower, they're closer to Earth, right. and the dishes are much smaller. Okay. But because of this uh, difference, you only need very few satellites geostationary because the footprint is big. Right. Because right. they're up there. Right. The, but if you're very low, your footprint will be tiny. Smaller, yeah. That's why uh, they have to deploy 40,000. Wow. satellites all over the world wow. in order to cover it because it's so low in the Earth's orbit. How, much, how many will it take to cover the Philippines? They've already launched uh, about 3,000 satellites. Okay. And um, with those 3,000 satellites, they're covering 40 countries and that will actually include the entire Philippines. Wow. So with the, with the first 3,000 satellites. Very exciting.